Hey everyone, welcome to your first official day of eighth grade math. Um, obviously, we're going to be taking notes today, so if you don't have it in front of you, pause the video now and go grab um, a sheet of loose leaf paper that you can put in a binder, or grab a notebook that's going to be dedicated specifically just for math. And then you're going to be writing this title at the top of your paper, so it's going to say Exponents 10.1. So we have a few vocabulary words to look over. Um, the first word that we're going to talk about is power. Power is the product of repeated factors. So if you look down at this image below, you can see that the power is everything. It's going to be the product. We know from before that product means multiplication. It's the answer to a multiplication problem. You can kind of get a little hint into the future that we're going to be multiplying, and so the power is going to be the answer to this problem. And then the base is the, the common factor, and so you can see down here that the base is that blue number, it's the three, it's the common factor, it's what's being repeated over and over again. And the last vocabulary word with it, that we have is exponent. An exponent tells you how many times that base is going to be used as a factor. And so it tells you how many times to write down that base. So in this case down here, our exponent is a four. So we wrote down that base of three, four times. If at any point you need extra time, please just pause the video. Take as much time as you need. If you need to hear me go over a slide again or go over a problem again, just hit the rewind button or just click back on um, the time and re-listen to what I'm saying. Now we're going to be writing each product using exponents. So on this previous slide, you can see that we had four different threes repeated, and so that was considered three to the fourth. When we're looking at this one, we are repeating a negative seven. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is identify what that base is. So the first thing that we're doing is identifying what that base is. As you can see, the number that is being repeated is negative seven. So I'm going to copy down negative seven because that is our base. The second thing we're gonna do is to count how many times the base has been repeated. In this case, you can see that it's one, two, three times. That's going to be our exponent. You can see why I was typing. So that tells us how many times, or that tells us our exponent. And so for this problem, we know that our exponent is three. So I'm just going to write a three above it, and that's gonna be the answer to this problem. Having a fraction in there might look a little bit scary, but for this kind of a problem, it's really not too bad because we're just first identifying that base. We can see that that base is one half, and we're just gonna write that. The second thing we're going to do is count how many times the base has been repeated, and that tells us our exponent. So we can count one, two, three, four, and that means our exponent is going to be a four. Try these four problems on your own. You might notice that number four looks a little bit different, so try them out. And I'm going to give you the answers in just a second. So pause the video now so you can try it. And here are your answers. So for number one, we've got four to the sixth, 
For number two, we have r to the second. For number three, we have negative two to the fifth. And for number four, we've got three to the second times pi to the second. If you notice, for each one of my answers, the base is in parentheses. That is super important for you to do, and we'll get to that in a second. For this fourth one, all you're going to do is separate it, and then you're going to write the product of that side and write the product of that side and put them next to each other. For this one, we are evaluating using each, or we're evaluating each expression. And so we're just doing the opposite of what we just did. We're given our factor and we have to solve it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what that exponent is. In this case, it's four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out four blanks. In between each blank, I'm going to put a multiplication sign. And that's representing the four times we're going to have to write out our base. And so we just completed step one. We looked at the exponent and we drew a blank to represent the exponent. Now we're moving on to step two. Write the base on each blank you drew in step one. I can see that my base is everything that's inside this parenthesis, which is going to be a negative two. So I'm going to write a negative two on each blank. Our last step is to solve or evaluate. And so that just means that we have to actually go through and multiply it. So I'm going to switch colors. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to take it one step at a time. So I'm going to look at two time or negative two times negative two. A negative times a negative is going to give me a positive number. Two times two gives me four. So I know that negative two times negative two equals four. Now I'm going to do the next step. 4 times negative 2. A positive times a negative gives me a negative. 4 times 2 is 8. And then our last step, negative 8 times negative 2. Negative times a negative gives me a positive number. 8 times 2 is 16. So I know that negative 2 to the fourth power is 16. Let's look at this next one. It's a little bit different than the first one that we were looking at, but not by much. It's just a parenthesis difference. But that makes a huge impact on what our number actually is going to be. So I told you before that it's really important to keep your bases in parentheses, and this is why. Because that negative sign is not grouped up with the two using the parentheses like in problem one, our base is just that too. The negative sign is in front of it and it's not part of our entire power. So we're gonna go through those same steps. Our exponent is a four again. And so I'm going to draw four blanks to represent my exponent being a four. Next, we write our blank or write our base on each blank. Our base, like I said before, is just two in this case. So I'm going to write a two on each of those lines. And then we're going to solve and evaluate. Two times two gives me a four. Four times two gives me an eight. And eight times two gives me a 16. So we've got that part down. However, we've still got that negative sign. What we're going to do is just tack it on at the end. So that's going to give us a negative 16. For our third problem, we have one third to the third power. Same thing again, look at the exponent. We've got a three, so I'm going to have three blanks in this case. 
our base is a one third. So I'm going to write one third on each of my blanks. After that, we have to solve and evaluate. If you remember from when you started doing fractions, we always multiply our fractions just straight across on the top and on the bottom. So we're going to look at the top or the numerator first. We have one times one times one, and so that's going to give us a one. For the bottom, we have three times three times three, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, so I know that the denominator for our fraction is going to be 27, and that's going to be our final answer. Now it's your turn. Solve these three problems and pause the screen. Again, I'll have the answers available for you to check. If you have any issues where you don't get the correct answer, especially for all three of them, make sure that you email me or talk to me in the Zoom because we do have a Zoom later today. And these are your answers. So for number one, we have 25. Number two, we have negative 25. And for number three, we have one over 25 or 1 25th. The last thing that I need to talk about is order of operations. So the first thing that we're going to be looking for is grouping symbols. I know before you guys have used a lot of parentheses. Parentheses are included in grouping symbols, as you can see up there. But grouping symbols include a lot more than just parentheses. So I think it's really important that we think about all of the grouping symbols that are possible and not just parentheses. From there, it's the same thing. So we've got our exponents next, then multiplication or division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. So I've got two order of operation problems for you. Let's try this first one now. What we're going to be looking for first is our grouping symbols. I see some parentheses here that include is included in the grouping symbol, so that's what I'm going to solve first. So three plus four is going to give me a seven. So I'm going to write down my seven, and then I'm going to copy down that rest of the problem that we were given. Now that everything's solved within the parentheses or any other grouping symbols, we're gonna move on to our second thing we're looking for, which is our exponents. I see an exponent up here, so I'm going to be solving 7 to the second. I know that 7 to the second means 7 times 7, which is going to give me 49. So I'm going to copy down 49, and I'm going to keep that in parentheses. And then I'm going to copy down the rest of the problem. The reason why I'm keeping it in parentheses is let's say that I just wrote down 49 and then I copied down the rest of the problem. That would say 249, which is not what I want. I wanted to say 2 times 49 because we know that when we have a number on the outside of the parentheses, we're going to technically use the distributive property to multiply um, from whatever is outside to whatever is inside. And that's what we're actually going to be doing next is multiplication and division from left to right. My multiplication is right here because the only other operation is subtraction. So I'm going to do 2 times 49, which is going to give me 98. Wow, that was a rough 9. And then I'm going to copy down the rest of the problem. Our last step is 127 minus 98. So we're going to solve that because our last step is addition or subtraction from left to right. And if you can't do this in your head, you can always use a calculator. I got 29 as our answer. And that's going to be it. Now I want you to try to solve this problem on your own. Remember to use the order of operations, 
pause the video now and I'll give you your answer in a second. And you should have gotten nine. You can look at my work up there, pause it if you need to. And here's your homework. So this is also listed on Canvas. So if you want to copy down the problems from Canvas, that's fine too. Make sure that you do this on a new sheet of paper. I don't want it right next to your notes. Um, this is in your textbook. So if you've got your hard textbook, you can always use that. Um, otherwise, use the textbook that is on your computer. If you've got any questions, you can ask me during our Zoom today, or you can send me an email. Either works.